get me thinking cap on and f th see if I can find a way to black blank that uh, orifice up. Here's what we've got. I spoke to my welder and he recommended JB Weld as a two-part epoxy adhesive. So that's what we're going to use. There's our oil pickup and that is a little bit of aluminium I've cut to fit which will fit right over the end there. Now it's light as a feather there's no weight to it. And uh, We've got some meths for cleaning it all. I've got a wooden block there which I'm going to wrap in this 120 grit paper and make sure the face that we're going to stick to is flat and has got a good key for the adhesive. So we've stuffed that with paper. I've got my um, old tea towels wrapped around so nothing's going to go in the engine. So I'm going to do that now. We've done that, we've blocked it, so that now is flat. And that's our piece is going to go across it. So I'm going to clean that out and then degrease the whole thing with meths. We'll make sure it's scrupulously clean so we can get that to stick. I've got a cotton makeup glove. I'm going to get right in the orifices in there and then when I've done that I'm going to spray a bit of WD on the fingertip and just make sure that we get all the bits out. Right, I think that's pretty clean. I've cleaned it out with meths. I think that's as clean as when it was in the Honda factory and that's pretty smooth. So that's what we've cut off. That's the end what we've cut off and I'm simply going to replace it with that. So there's that I think that's going to stick on. That's, there's, I mean, there's no weight in it at all. It's light as a feather. All we need to do is make sure that it bonds into there. So I've got a lovely um, Windsor Castle tea towel. The map of the world and an anchor. That's lovely. That'll be lucky. Right, I've mixed it to instructions, half and half each. It says here, leave it for 10 minutes to um, solidify a bit. Okay, so I'll do that. I'll mark the top. So that's an old paintbrush handle. So let's carefully stiffened up after 10 minutes. Try not to get any on the inside so it doesn't get sucked into the oil. But we can wipe it off if it's on the outside. Now it says apply to both surfaces. So we'll stick that on there like that. Okay, now this top is too thin to put any on, so I'm going to apply the plate. Let's put some on the bottom. I'm going to apply the plate and then put a bead on the top of it when it's fixed. some duct tape holding it on. Now that's in place so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully run a bead around that back edge there. Right I've taken the tape off I'm going to leave that because what I was worried about was the tape uh, sticking 
to the material and uh, not being able to get that off and when I pulled the tape off it would break the panel off or something like that so I've left the tape off now that looks as if it's going to be okay so all that all that JB weld stuff's got to do is stick that on. There's no weight in it. It's got nothing, nothing, no weight to carry. There's no pressure because it's sucking. So all that JB weld has got to do is hold that plate on. Uh, and I think it'll be okay. I mean, the way they describe it, America's toughest weld does everything. Pots and pans. Uh, it's, I bought that on Amazon. If you go to the JB Weld actual website, they say they can't sell it uh, in the EU, so there must be uh, chemicals, dangerous chemicals in it or something, but it, uh, it was on Amazon. So I bought that, I mean, it says America's tough as well, but um, it seems to be actually made in Germany, but that's a good thing. Right, that's it. So I'm going to leave that now, uh, not mess about with it anymore. There's the job completed. The sump's on. There's our nice piece. Uh, Terry's welded in. Now all that welding has actually warped the sump. This end is up and that end is up a bit and it wasn't seating right and I thought it was catching on the um, uh, oil picker but it actually wasn't. It, the sump itself is a little bit warped. So I took it on the bench and just sanded down with my sanding block the center part there and I've I tightened it down and it seems to be sitting okay so I've put two bolts in the back and two in the front so I'm going to leave it now for a couple of days and let it think about things right let's see if all the work we've done works it's time to put the engine into the subframe see if it fits now the problem has been with that steering rack the sump needs to go over the steering rack so there's our engine there's our sump so I've measured it carefully and fingers crossed it should clear that sump should clear there now Terry's made some new engine mountings I made a little cardboard pattern so let's see, it's, hopefully it works. There's the original alloy ones. He's fabricated these in steel. So the S2000 engine in the S2000 is at a bit of an angle. So I've just turned it a little bit more vertical and it should fit on those mounting points there. The original Forenza mounting is here. So we'll fix these to the engine got the crane and lower it in. And I've got the engine on the left, it's around the alternator pulley, it's around there, it's around there and it's around the water pump on the other side. So we'll get that, take the weight off that and uh, lift it off its stand. I'm glad you weren't um, watching that, that was uh, a little bit tricky this uh, mounting I had to cut it up so much uh, I just abandoned it and put the original one back on but I've kept I'm still using this one a little needs a little bit of dressing here but that's a bit of a space under there but we'll tighten that up now the main thing is we've got clearance right there you can see that rack there so we've got clearance on that side so we've got it located I'll have to get shorter bolts for that but that's fine that fits that's on uh, that's, we can tighten that 
tighten that mounting up that won't be too bad let's get around the other side and have a look around the other side we've, I've used the original engine mounting for that so it just about fits with a little bit of adjustment here and there uh, but you can see the clearance between the sump and the steering rack which is all, all which was my main concern now the engine itself is 20 15 or 20 millimeters to this side now I'll go back the other side and I'll tell you why so back on the other side now this side looks roomy now but there's an exhaust manifold goes on there and then there's the steering knuckle down there so I'm going to uh, cut a piece out of there to make clearance for the steering connection which is down there so the steering comes right up here we've got the manifold all there so we need as much space as we can get so with the engine slanting over as it does uh, I've told myself that uh, the tops in the middle even though the bottoms over a little bit in the uh, Magnum when that was a Magnum it had the big heavy slant four out of the CF van It was heavier on one side than the other because it slanted this slanted over that way to get it under the bonnet So they put a stronger spring on that side than on that side. So it's not um, unprecedented having uh, an engine to the side of it, but we do need the space down here, so uh, it, it is over a little bit, but I think it should be okay. Let's have a look at the let's have a look at the back. So there's the back. So you can see how the engine slants over. So the top of it is in the middle, but the bottom really isn't all that. Uh, I've lined it up so it's perpendicular in the chassis. So at least I've done that. But it's in there. Uh, gearbox, gear lever, all that kind of stuff. Well, there are problems to come. But the engine is sitting in the frame. That's a good result. So bye bye for now.